Hi everyone, welcome back to the Purple Pumpkin. I'm Laura and I garden in Zone 6, Connecticut. And today we are embracing fall. <laughs> it's September and as far as I'm concerned, fall is starting now. Halloween is starting now. So it's time to update the look of the garden. Um, I've been spending a lot of time this season thinking about the color palette of the garden and what I really want it to be. Uh, and I've been thinking a lot about adding some more dark plants, some goth to the garden. And honestly, one of the things that I know I definitely want to change is the amount of pink that is happening right now. I used a lot of pink in the garden this year and in years past. And as pretty as it is, and as much as I love bubblegum petunias, uh, they are so amazing. I just think it's just not... It's just not exactly what I'm looking for anymore. So I am obviously a purple person, but I've been thinking getting rid of a lot of the pink and adding a lot more like deep reds, deep purples, blacks even. Uh, that's more of what I'm going for. Actually, I was on Instagram and I was like looking through hashtags and I saw the term whimsigoth, like whimsical and gothic. And I was like, that's exactly what I that's exactly what I'm going for so what better time to start that process than now in the fall um so we're gonna start with the porch and the front yard and we are just gonna start pulling some pink plants and adding some more goth to the garden so let's get started so let's have a look at what we're working with. This is the little side porch area, and this is where the main focus is gonna be today. So up here I have a royal velvet petunia and this calibracoa. It's got pink in it, but it really is more of like an orangey peach. So I think I'm gonna keep both of those and just shuffle them around. In this window box I have a verbena, sparkling amethyst and then a couple um alyssum the ivy i'm probably gonna leave in pots and then i have at the bottom here um a couple more petunias they're balcony petunias there's a pink and a purple there is a verbena in this big purple pot along with um just a little evergreen tree and there's some alyssum in there as well and then these little pots are just um plants that need to get planted out so I'm probably just gonna move these off of here and then up here I just have another verbena and a calibracoa there was a pansy in there but or a petunia in there as well but I uh that one died <laughs> but those are doing well still and they're kind of both in the purple family so I think I'm gonna keep those as well so I'm just gonna shuffle some stuff around I'm gonna add some things and I'm gonna get rid of some pink and let's get to the before and afters. So up here where I had the Royal Velvet Petunia and the Calibracoa, I took those down. I did keep them, I just moved them. And I replaced them over here with um, a couple of Verbenas. I took the Verbenas out of the big purple pot and the window box and I repurposed them over here. And then I had that hanging basket that was just on the other side of this area. I just moved it over to this side. And I think it looks pretty over here. And I got something kind of amazing to go on the other side. <laughs> so you'll see that in a minute. And then down here where I had the big purple pot, I moved a lot of these out and I replaced um, this area with asters. These are not mums they're asters i have never had good luck with mums so these are asters are very similar but they're just way easier to care for i find so i put an aster in here and some dusty miller and there's an angelonia in the back as well and one of the ver verbenas did last and then up here where i had this one i scooched this one over to the other side and i replaced it with this amazing plant that they had at Home Depot. 
this was $20, this hanging basket. I normally would not spend that much, but this plant is like literally everything. It, I mean, the leaves are like almost black. It's called Mona Lavender. The leaves are almost black and they have like a purplish underside. And then the flowers are these bright purple. They're gorgeous. This whole plant is just amazing. And I've seen the hummingbirds on it. They love it. I, I just love this. This is, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> this plant is everything. It's tropical. So it won't last, but I might try to bring it inside after, uh, once it starts getting colder. We'll see. And then over here in the purple pumpkin, I ended up taking out that pink plant and I put another aster in here as well. Um, I really like the color of these and they're really all butted up. So they should be blooming extra soon. And there's a lobelia in the front that I ended up able to save. So I like the way that is trailing over the edge. It looks really pretty. And I like the way this came out. I think simple, but really cute. And then over here, I had um, the alyssum basket and the bubblegum supertunia. And I just switched those out with the ones that were on the other side before. So I moved the peachy orangey calibracoa over here along with the royal velvet supertunia. And I really like this calibracoa. The more I look at it, the more it blooms. I really love the the way it blooms, how it's like kind of all mounded. It's just like really pretty. <laughs> um it does have some pink in the throating, but it really is more of a coral orangey color, so I'm I'm cool with it. <laughs> and then my favorite project, I think, was the window basket. So it had this verbena in here. I took that out. I ended up able to save a couple of the little alyssums that were in here. And I found some purple sweet potato vine. To use as a trailing element and then I put a little bit of Dusty Miller in there and some Angelonia which is like one of my favorite new annuals so pretty that's the taller purple one so there's some alyssum in here and then I used a couple of the little pumpkins from around the garden that are growing to give it more of a fall look and I love the way this turned out I just think it looks super cute so this is how the porch is looking now no more pink it's giving fall I really like it's it's definitely in that whimsy goth family so I am definitely pleased with that and in the front, I also replaced a few things. So I'll just show you some of the things I replaced and what I replaced them with. But most of that I'll probably go over in my garden tour. But up here in the front, I had this bubblegum petunia that I replaced with a rose mallow dark mystery. It's similar to a hibiscus. It's a shrubby perennial gets about four to five feet tall and wide and the foliage on this is just gorgeous that's why I got it pretty much so I can't wait to see this grow into a bigger plant and hopefully bloom for me next year and then on the other side I had pulled these bubblegum petunias I pulled all the bubblegum petunias from wherever I had them and this area over here I'm just starting to kind of get a vision for. So I replaced that bubblegum petunia there with um, a Wygela. I actually just moved this from another spot in the yard. But I like the red against the little baby blue spruce behind it. And this is um, a smaller Wygela. It's one that only gets to be about three by three. So I think it'll be perfect for this spot. And then I just moved some Adjuratum seedlings 
from other spots. I have a lot of volunteers of these, so I just kind of move these out. They grow fast, and they'll probably bloom for me soon. And then along the path, I'm trying to start a cat mint little hedge type thing there. So I need, to, I'll probably start them from seed next year to fill in the rest of the area. And then over here, trigger warning for spiders, guys. Um, but there's an, a crazy spider in the garden today. Oh my God. <laughs> I am terrified of spiders. This thing is enormous. I wish I could have gotten a little closer, but I was just so afraid. It's like yellow and it's very awesome and scary. And de definitely got. <laughs> and then the last change I made was just to switch out the garden gate. So I paint these um, for seasons. Like I have one for spring and summer, one for fall, and one for winter. So I switched out the fall garden gate. And I did try to clean up the little pots at the base a little bit. I put some pumpkins in there, a little evergreen tree to take me into winter on one side. And of course, our spooky Halloween tree. This guy's seen better days, but that's okay. <laughs> He'll last another year, I think. Um, so that's about it for now. I'm hoping to work on some maybe DIY Halloween projects. I think that will be kind of fun to do. So maybe you'll see a future video on that. And I thank you so much for joining me for this one. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you're into this kind of content. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye!